If you're an intermediate user of Blender, this tutorial is meant for you. Most of the steps will not be completely walked through. This is one of the earlier videos, and I still have to download some software that will help you see exactly what keys I'm pressing. Basically, you'll have to fill in some of the blanks with what I'm doing here, but you'll be able to see the basic process for how I created these sunglasses. Hopefully you'll enjoy. Welcome to this 10 minute tutorial. We're going to be looking at how to make sunglasses, which will include importing reference images using the proportional editing tools inside of Blender, as well as how to import files from other places. You're gonna start off with a new file, so click File, New, General. You're gonna to wanna to delete everything. Left click and drag a box. Once everything is selected, click the Delete key, or right click, and then click Delete. At this point, the first thing we're going to do is add our reference image. Press Shift A, and you can add an empty image. You can also add many other things, which we'll get to later. The empty image shows up in your workspace. Go over to your object data, and you can see there's a reference image that you can open. For my sunglasses, I'm going to use the Oakley uh, Half Jacket 2.0. Just like any object, you can move this image. Click G in order to move it. To move it along a specific axis, press G and then the axis key. So I press Z. Um, you're gonna wanna rotate it, so press R, and then you can either free rotate it or select the axis once again, which will be X, and then enter in 90 with your number pad. We're scaling this up for ease of use. Next, I'm going to Append a file that I used for the lenses. If this was an STL that you downloaded, you can import it. But append is for native Blender files. I save this in my Blender projects. I call it corrected lens. Go to object. Um, there's going to be a bunch of folders. You can import a bunch of stuff, but we want the object. It's almost always what you'll append. And we're going to select Oakley Half Jacket Scaled. And at this point, um, use the same functions that we learned with S and G to position your lens. G, Y, G, C. This lens is not a perfect model. The one uploaded for you to download will be better than this, and there won't be lumps. But that's besides the point. What you can do to look directly at the front of your model is press one on your number pad. Hopefully you have a number pad. If not, there's always this option where you can click this little uh, view finder and it will bring you exactly where you need. So scale your lenses, rotate them. I'm gonna rotate mine along the Y axis very slightly. Um, and you actually have to bring it into the center. I'll show you why going to want two of them. We're going to add a modifier. In order to do so, you select the object, go to the um, modifiers, which are the wrench. It looks like a wrench. And you add the modifier, which is going to be the mirror modifier. Uh, in object mode, that mirrors it across the z-axis. Or the, you're going to want to actually make it the x but you can change that to fit whatever you're doing. Um, press t the tab key and it will bring you into edit mode. Press A to select all the glasses. G and then X will um, spread the lenses apart for you. At this point, go back into object mode and rotate the lenses. As you can see, I have a slight problem with the mesh, which I will undo. Gotta make sure it's all of it. Hmm. Oh well, we'll fix that later, hopefully. Rotate it along the z-axis anyways. Go back into edit mode. Try and make sure they're at the correct rotation. Object mode will fix this for us. Um, okay. This is kind of a fiddly process, but once you get this done, the rest of it should be fairly easy. If you need any help with this part, I, I can try and help, but most of it's just fiddling around using the 
translation functions inside of Blender. Another way to access those is through here. If you don't want to use your keys, you can do move and use the arrows or use a rotate widget, which will accomplish the same things that you need. Okay, we imported these terrible looking lenses. And now we just need to add another thing, which will actually be a cube. It brings it to the center of your screen. I don't know how to move, center the 3D cursor here. Okay, origin to 3D cursor. So object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Nope, that's not right. Object. I don't know. It's very weird. If I find out later, I'll tell you. Anyways, we're just starting with the cube and we're going to use the basic functions once again to move it into place. Press the keys on your number pad to look where you need to look. Don't mind the spikes on the lenses. Fix that later. You have a cube. Since we're mirroring this, we want to see that it lines up with the z-axis fairly well. Um, overlapping it is better, so we'll do that. Uh, go into tab. You're now in edit mode. You're going to want nice and narrow sunglasses. Sleek looking sunglasses. Um, at this point, if you do control R, you can add edge loops and this will give you more faces to control the geometry. Just hit extrude. You want to start with simple shapes. Grab it along the Y axis, maybe move it up. Actually don't move it up. So what you're going to need to do here is just hide these lenses. So click on them, press H and just use the picture as a reference. Use control R and use your middle mouse wheel. Scroll up on that to add the number of cuts. The more you add, the more detail you can get. This is where proportional editing comes in handy. Without proportional editing, you select one edge and that edge moves by itself. This is a problem when you're trying to get curves. In order to do this, turn on proportional editing by either pressing O on your keyboard or selecting up here. At this point, select the center edge by left clicking and grab it and move it up along the Z axis. So that is slightly too thick. You can fix this by using more proportional editing. Another thing you can do, which might be helpful, is you can do face select instead of edge, or you can also do point select just by clicking these three boxes in the upper left corner. And if I move all of those up, they would be much narrower. If you're wondering that why these look so boxy right now, it's because the modifier that we're going to add later will fix that in about three clicks. So we know we have the top profile fairly close. Um, at this point, we can turn off proportional editing by pressing O and just fix all the parts that we need to. Okay, so today you learned how to use proportional editing basic uh, movement of cubes. It was kind of a crash course. It was really fast, but I hope this was helpful. This is part one. 
and I'm keeping my tutorials to 10 minutes long. That's why I have to end it here. I'll upload part two later. The final result is on the thumbnail if you want to see what we're making.